high value uh, finished products that are exported globally. And the idea here was um, that Africa has been exporting raw materials for the longest time and the value actually has not been kept in Africa. And so what I wanted to do with this fora is to take one of Africa's leading uh, commodity and Africa is depending on the years between the first and the third largest exporter of tea in the world. Uh, but if you look at the top 500 tea companies, not one of them is actually African. Uh, in 2013, um, this concept of an inclusive luxury uh, was nominated for a prize by the Center of Luxury and Creation in France as the most innovative concept in luxury. And uh, this is not something um, that, you know, first of all, it was the first time an African brand, so Iswara, had been nominated for this award. And the fact that we're uh, nominated in the innovation category and invited actually again this year to come and talk about this concept. So it is something that's in, in all of our brands, you know, I, I gave it a name but um, you know, every, every literally every brand, every African brand does it. So <coughs> please take it, take that concept. Let's talk about the looks Ubuntu, Ubuntu luxury, and this is how we create trends, and this is how we as African also own things that we've created. Please, this this is for all of us. Yes, taking the shots here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys already did. Oh, Um, so, uh, this version that we have is a reason to, you know, get people to come to Africa, you know, this is our own uh, definition of uh, culture and heritage, um, and that's another thing that, you know, we, we focus on a lot. Um, Ogogoro is heritage, this is who we are. It's been around for, for millennia, and um, it's just been marginalized, and uh, we just you know, reinventing it and bringing it back in a different way. When you cement that and distill come wine, the distillate is so gogoro. So that's what the gogoro is. So this is a native spirit to Africa. And this is the first time that we are taking it and elevating it to a different level where it can stand side by side with any top shelf spirit out there in the marketplace aspect to this story, right? Um, during the colonial times, um, specifically in Nigeria, Igogoro was a tribal industry, but when um, the British came in our case, uh, they wanted to trade gin, and what they did is suppress the Igogoro market and, you know, make it something that was uncool, unfashionable, it is a native spirit to Africa, right? So wherever there are palm trees, there's a Igogoro, and wherever there's a go-guru, there's going to be peasants. <laughs> people using those ingredients in Central London, people may just champion us as the West African or Nigerian restaurants in Central London, which we're not. But uh, that, that message led to the West Africans coming into the door and demanding swallow. <laughs> <laughs> which we obviously couldn't deliver because it's not what we're doing, but that, that caused a bit of a struggle because we couldn't meet those expectations. Uh, so so that, 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 the diaspora was not, I mean, they still, they still come in sometimes, up until yesterday, asking for swallow. I mean, and kind of still, it's a hard conversation to have because they, they really think that we are uh, trying to deceive them by saying we sell swallow, but to get them in, for example, the, the BBC, uh, uh, video that's gone viral with us, you know, that they, they took in the first uh, week that was sent with pretty much everyone in Nigeria was having that video on their phone and the title of the video said, Taste of Nigeria in Central London. So obviously Nigerians were coming and asking for a taste of Nigeria in Central London, which we couldn't, which we couldn't uh, provide. So.